Yes, come on, are you excited to be here today? Awesome, we're in this series called Legacy, as you can see on all the screens, and we just started it. And speaking of legacy, we are in our Veterans Day weekend here, and we as a nation, listen, we have a legacy thanks to our soldiers and thanks to our veterans. And I want to make it very personal for me. I can live here in this great nation as an immigrant together with my family safe and free thanks to our veterans so from the bottom of my, my heart thank you so much if you're a veteran in this room can you just lift your hand please can you lift your hand come on church can we honor our veterans in this place thank you thank you so much thank you thank you one of my favorite veterans is our own pastor Chris come on can we give it up for pastor Chris as well our marine pastor I feel so safe I feel so safe both spiritually and physically and there's no safer place in the world to be than at Ray Church I'm just telling you that flat out it's the safest place to be on every level right I even I even wear my baby camo shirt today in honor of all of you so so yeah I want to do that today right and before we say anything else too if you are a young adult today 6 30 here at Reed Church we have our young adult community that is called the movement so if you are a young adult if you feel like a young adult please come hang out with us come bring your friends it's amazing it's great don't miss it out 6 30 today yeah last week Pastor Chris started this new series called legacy and he talked about how to live how to lead and how to leave a legacy and he he said one sentence that really stood out to me that I've been carrying with me all week and I want to I want to start with that quote today because we're building on it from today he said this legacy is not about investing into this world system but it is about investing into people right it's so true that's the legacy we are here to build that's the legacy we're here to leave so let me start off by asking you a question have you ever looked for the right thing on the wrong place yeah I know that's I can lift both hands that's me all the time I was born like that I didn't find anything as a kid but I quickly I'm, I'm a smart kid so I quickly understood that my mom she knows where everything in this universe is at all time like I can move it around I can sneak it around but she still know where it's moved to right so I took advantage of that as a kid like many kids probably do like mom I can't find my black sweater and she was like honey it's behind that blue vase in the third closet in the second room east of the North Pole like like she knew she knew where it was every time and now I'm more mature today I've grown up I'm like I'm, I'm even smarter today but I still struggle especially with my three kids I have three young wild kids right Vikings like in my house and they move stuff around how can you expect me to know where everything is now I'm sometimes when I struggle getting in ready in the morning getting in rest before school it's frustrating okay let's be honest but I'm so blessed that I'm married I'm so grateful for my wife because she's kind of inherited what my mom she knows where everything is so sometimes when I'm like I, I, I need to go I'm late to work I'll come on honey I cannot find Luz's left foot like I, I don't know what it is and then she's like honey is still attached to his left leg like it's still there well, that's that joke was much more fun in my notes than what you <laughs> what you tell me right about. but anyway I'm making note of that that's a bad bad joke all right anyway now we talk about legacy legacy is something that is bigger than yourself legacy is something that would outlive yourself something that will live on when you and I die and listen we are all called to legacy to leave a legacy to lead a legacy to to live a legacy we're all called to that you're born with a purpose you're called to make a difference right if you haven't seen it it's on our walls it's there for you but here's the catch sometimes we fail finding that purpose sometimes we fail making a difference in our life sometimes we fail building on that legacy not because we're doing the wrong things and sometimes not even because we're doing it in the wrong place but because we have sometimes the wrong perspective so let me talk about this uh, for a few minutes here in the morning legacy is all about perspective to live with the right 
perspective in life. The right perspective changes everything. And let's make it clear here, the first thing we do, the Bible says that each and every one of us in this room, every person on this planet, we are born with eternity in our heart. The Bible says that eternity is placed in our hearts. It's in your DNA. You are created to live forever. You're meant to live forever. You, you're meant to live life here on earth as if you know that it will last forever. Each and every one of us are right but so that means that even if you live a successful life and a great life and you get 90 95 years old you will still know that there is something missing you will still know that life is more than this i had a great life let's be grateful but there is more to it that's eternity beating in your chest that's that's just the proof that you let you meant you created to live for something even greater than what you are experiencing right now so with the right perspective in life eternity perspective we will live differently right what we do here on earth will echo through eternity and eternity is a very long time all right let's get that clear Jesus, this is how jesus put it it said in matthew 6 20 and 21 it says store up for yourself treasures in heaven all right store it up he's in investing business here jesus but he's saying here's the best place to store it up invest into eternity store them up in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also here on earth we all know it some of us with by experience our treasure can be taken away in a heartbeat we can lose it over over one night that's how unstable our world is in many aspects right but did you know that you can invest into heaven you can invest into eternity and there the value will never ever decrease it will never lose its value isn't that amazing so the question is how can we make that practical now because up there in eternity in heaven there won't be any thieves stealing it no rust will destroy it and every time i read this my favorite part no moth will be there eating it because i think every time i read that god if you will not allow moth into heaven please leave the mosquitoes out as well come on somebody if, if you can decide like that god please okay can we talk about a few more animals when we are talking about it but if we are called we are called to store up in heaven how does that practically look like and I want to take you on a journey now with with one of my one of my favorite stories in the Bible and, and we're going to look at this person with a he had his heart on the right place and he was living with perspective and he was investing and building a treasure in heaven and he left an amazing an amazing legacy and his story begins in Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 it says this Jesus mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph I want to talk with you today about Joseph Joseph's life we know Joseph and Mary even if you're not used to go to church you know their story because every Christmas we talk about it right how they left Nazareth and they found a place in Bethlehem and that's where Jesus was born and so on and so forth right we know the basic of the story but let's dig into the story today Joseph and Mary they were in this Jewish culture and they were teenagers in love with one another and they were now pledged to be married sometimes we compare that to being engaged to be married and it's it's the closest comparison we can have today to explain it but to be pledged in a jewish culture it's much stronger than than an engagement you are you are bound to one another by law you're basically already married you you need a divorce to split up but you're not living together yet the actual marriage has not taken place yet but you're living separated with your parents preparing for a year uh, earning money making money building a house so that you can fulfill the marriage a year later so they were not pledged to be married they were in love with one another they were two good people and they were waiting to get married now but then it says in the end of verse 18 but before they came together Mary was found to be pregnant before they came together I mean we adults we can figure out what that means if you have no idea what that means so we can talk afterwards but I think you know what that means right so before they came together Mary was found Joseph found Mary to be pregnant all right and that translation actually says it became visible that she was pregnant <laughs> all right so he saw evidently that she 
was pregnant. So let me ask you now, how can you know, how is it visible that someone is pregnant? Don't go around and guess too much today now, but, but I mean, biology works. So it's the baby bump, right? You can't, you can't hide it because it will grow, a baby will grow inside of the woman that is pregnant. So eventually it will show, all right? Okay, so, so now they could see, Joseph could see with his own eyes that a child is growing inside of his wife to be right. Remember, we know the end to the story. We know the full story. We know that, that this is God's child uh, placed there by God, right? With God's will to be the savior of the world. This has never happened before in history. It will never happen again. This was once in a time, once opportunity. God did this to be born as a human being, right? God made flesh. But Joseph didn't know this. This young guy in love with his wife to be, he had no clue that this that, that, that this was God in the beginning, right? So all he saw is that she has been with someone else, right? That's the conclusion you have to draw when you see that, right? So this deep sorrow, with deep sorrow in his heart, with this shock, right? He sees that his beloved Mary is pregnant. And l listen now, if he could see it, he's a teenage boy. Teenage boys are not the smartest in the world right I can say that because I've been one okay so if he could see that she was pregnant everyone could see that she was pregnant everyone in the village saw and knew that this girl is pregnant so let me explain this part now according to the Jewish law Joseph should never ever marry this adulteress right let's put it like it is there in their law, in their customs, now he had to divorce her. And he actually even had a right, according to the law, to have her stoned to death. To have her killed, punished, because she'd been so unfaithful to him and to the law. All right? So this is, now he's heartbroken. So, so this is what he says now in the following words. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. He was faithful to God's ways. He wanted to please God in every way. And yet, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He decided to divorce her quietly. To save her life, right? Because he loved her so much. He didn't want to... He don't want to do this. It was not an easy decision to make, right? With tears in his eyes, with his heart completely broken, he decided to break up with her in secret. Just make it a small thing. And, and then, of course, people would talk later, but I don't, want to, I don't want to be the one talking about it. Can you imagine what a terrible situation he's in? Joseph, this young guy, he trusted her. She seemed to be a great girl, right? One of those 10-pointers, like in every way. And now, from nowhere... His world is just falling apart. Can you imagine that? I know you can. Because most of us, we've been walking through similar situation. Maybe not relational situation like this. Some of you have. But all of us have experienced things in life where it feels like everything totally unexpectedly is just falling apart around us, right? The rug is swept off under your feet and, and you didn't do anything to deserve it. It just happened. Someone else, you know, did something or life happened and, and everything is falling. You seem to have everything under control. Everything was going well and then something unexpected happened. We know what that feels like. Joseph is experiencing this now and, and unfortunately a lot of people that are experiencing this, they will start to blame God and they will, you know, we all have that, those thoughts like, God, why would you allow me to do, go through this, right? Why would you do anything? And some people even decide it's not worth investing into the kingdom of God. But something is about to change here in Joseph's story. And what he's doing can be a role model for, for you and I, an example for you and I when we walk through similar situations. Because now when he make this decision, probably late at night, he's struggling, he's crying, he's wrestling with the decision. What can I do? What should I go do? He's angry, he's upset, he's bitter and yet he loves her, right? So he decides this and eventually he probably falls asleep late, late, late that night. Totally exhausted, right? But it says that the same night when he was asleep, he had a dream. And in his dream, an angel came and spoke to him in his dream. And the angel told him in the dream that no, she has not been unfaithful, Joseph. 
This is actually God placing a child. This is God made flesh inside of her. Now she will be, she, she's not being unfaithful. She's still a virgin, but, but he, she's giving birth now to Messiah, the prophet that the prophets has been talking about for, for, for centuries now. Come on, Joseph, and God is calling you to still marry her and help her raise this boy and have a family with her. That's a weird dream. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, God. Awesome. No, well, he probably woke up and like felt encouraged because this is what happens. When Joseph woke up, when he woke up, well, you know, when he woke up, from his, he was encouraged. And he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife. The same morning he had the dream. As soon as God spoke to him. He wanted to obey. It's not an easy decision to make, but he yet, yet he did it. Well, you think, Daniel, if an angel would come and visit me and speak to me in my situation, yeah, of course I would obey as well. But listen, we have much more today than angels speaking to us. We have something Joseph didn't have. We have the Bible. We have the actual words of God, not the words of an angel giving us the words of God, but the actual words of God in our Bible. And we are called to live by and, and, and walk by the, the word of God in every situation in our lives, right? So we have that and we just came out of this series, How to Hear from God. And, and one of the major points Pastor Chris made in this series is that because now we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us and we have the Word of God in our hands or in our smartphones, whatever you use, we don't need angels visiting us as frequent as before. We don't need to meet Jesus in the bathroom now and then, right? Unless it's very special. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to come to a meeting greet and hear Pastor Chris's testimony, right? It's amazing. It's amazing. But we don't need that because we have the Word of God. But even if an angel speaks to us like it spoke to Joseph, now that came with the Word of God, Joseph still had to believe and take a step in faith like you and I have to when it comes to the Bible. We have to choose to believe that what God is telling me to do now in my situation is the right thing to do. So the same morning, Joseph finalizes the, the marriage. Months prior to what was normal, months prior to what the tradition said, he did it probably a small celebration, nothing big, not, no inviting the whole village to be a part of it. Just the families, the immediate families, and they move in together and married that same day. Now, follow this thought now. The first thing we said is that everyone could see that Mary was pregnant. Everyone could see it, right? <laughs> and number two, now everyone sees that Joseph is marrying her, taking her home to be his wife months prior to what's normal with a small secret little celebration. If you add those two things together, this is what you get. Now everyone knew right everyone understood that Joseph was the one that that had made her pregnant and now he's just trying to cover his little mistake now he's just trying trying to make it look better than it could before this is the only conclusion everyone around them could have so for the rest of Joseph's life people were probably laughing behind his back for the rest of his life, people were gossiping about him, talking behind him. He was known to be the man in the village that couldn't keep his hands under control, right? You know what I'm talking about? He was the guy in the village whose first child was a mistake, right? And okay, he covered it up pretty good, but we all know. Even his close friends, probably years later, would walk up to him and remind him of this story. Oh, Joseph, we, we remember that you married Mary so quickly that, that one day and that Jesus was was born just four months after the wedding night come on you know nice try Joseph nice try right and Joseph even if he was trying to explain well I told you before guys you know God made her pregnant is not I didn't make a pregnant but God made it this is God's child and I'm called to raise God's child here oh yeah sure sure Joseph you're raised right it's not easy to explain he might be a hero to us but in his own time, he was completely misunderstood, right? So the second point of today, legacy comes with a price. It would cost you something to make an investment that will last forever. 
It will come with a price. Listen, you're called to make a difference. You're called not just in your time but in the time to come to leave a legacy behind. You're called to have the next generation standing on your shoulders so they can reach further than you and I could ever reach, right? But in our culture, we're used to fast food, the fast lane, fast track, instant rewards, right? I take my kids to H-E-B and they, they get the, the, the H-E-B box, whatever it's called, and they're looking for that instant reward in that machine. Like, we're raising our kids like that. You see what I'm saying? But the kingdom of God is way different. It's different perspective. Because we might be looking for legacy now and a reward now, now, now. But the kingdom of God and legacy is always about later. We invest into something that we will see the result of later. So even if you're obeying God right now and you're living for Him in every way, you might not experiencing that life is easy. Can I be honest, right? It's not always easy. It's not always a walk in the park and you think, I'm, I'm doing God what you called me to do. And yet I'm, I'm gossiped about, I'm persecuted and, and life is harder than ever before. Now when, I, now when I'm living for you, come on, don't give up. Because legacy comes with a price. We are here to invest into something. We might not see the results right away, right? But we are called to cultivate that, to keep investing into that always, always, always. Don't give up. You're storing up a treasure in heaven that will have an eternal value. So God spoke to Joseph. Joseph, he obeyed and he paid a high price. He paid with his repetition. He paid with his name. He paid with laughter, with gossip, with slander. But guess what? He made it possible for Jesus to grow up in a safe and a loving environment. He invested. He paid the price so that he could live, right? He could live safe. He could live with love. And Joseph, he paid. And he paid. And he paid. And he paid. But here's the problem. Joseph. He never got the reward here on earth. He never saw his legacy come to pass. The last time we meet Joseph in the Bible is when Jesus is 12 years old. It's the last time we hear about him. We hear about Mary and the brothers of Jesus a lot through, throughout this, the rest of the story. But Joseph will never hear about him ever again. This means that Joseph must have died somewhere between Jesus' age of 12 and Jesus' age of 30 when he stepped into ministry. So somewhere that we don't know the reasons. The Bible doesn't tell us why Joseph died. But come on, he was a carpenter in a time when they didn't have a lot of machines, tools helping out, right? So he lived a tough life. So Jesus, uh, Joseph paid this price and even though we had a few dreams when Jesus was born, even though he heard from God and got directed by God and even though he saw that there's something special, something unique about this one boy, I doubt that he, I, 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 I know, I guess that he doubted many times. He was probably questioning, can this boy really be Messiah? He's just a boy. Is he really the prophet? Is, is he the king of kings that the prophet has been talking about, right? Joseph never knew because he died before Jesus stepped into ministry. Maybe he doubted for the rest of his life. We don't know. But we know one thing. Even if he was doubting, he kept on doing what was right. He never gave up. He kept investing in faith that this is what God called me to do. So the last point for today, don't give up investing. Keep doing what's right. Galatians talk about it. Keep doing what's right because when time is right, you will reap if you don't give up. Just don't give up. Just don't give up. Joseph never got the glory. He never got the fame. He never got the reward here on earth. On the contrary, he paid a high price. But I know when he enters heaven, I know it. When he walks into heaven, there will be a cheerful sound. And he will see this pie, this mountain of pure gold with his name on it, a treasure he's been storing up in heaven. And because him doing this, he left a legacy that has blessed the entire world in every, every generation ever since. His legacy was Jesus. He paid, Joseph paid the price. Joseph invested, but he never saw it in his time be fulfilled. 
How many times are we not focused on getting rewarded here and now? We want to see your legacy. The legacy is about later and investing into, you know, I don't know. I want to see something now. No, come on. We can't Photoshop our lives through life. We can't put filters on anything, everything and just make it look better. Life is life, right? And the kingdom of God is telling us you need to invest into something that you might not even see in your time. But you're storing up a treasure in heaven. It will be a reward for you one day. I want to encourage you. You may, might be walking through something right now that is tough, that is heartbreaking. But listen, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. And let me wrap this up with two very, very practical advices. So what can we take away from this? What can we do? Well, do what Joseph did. Number one, invest into your family. Invest into your spouse. Invest in your marriage. Don't let it run dry. Don't let it be a, a gray weekdays thing that, that you don't really, you know, like to spend time to. Invest in it. Make it fun. Love one another. Honor one another. Invest in your children. That's the most important legacy you have, right? Me and Stephanie, we, my wife, we're doing it very practically. We, we have three kids. They're young. They're all in elementary school. But twice a week, we do something in our family we call First 15. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we wake them up 20 minutes earlier than normal on a, on a school day. And we spend the first five minutes worshiping God. We put on a worship song on, on the computer and we sing along right and then we spend five minutes reading the, the bible together and, and we read a bible story and we make it very practical for their for their generation for their lives right now understandable for them and then we spend five minutes praying for what they are thinking about what they are struggling with what what they're concerned about what they are longing for we pray for them we pray every day but this is a special time 15 minutes and let me tell you, that makes all the difference in the world. You might say, well, why don't you do that every day of the week then? Well, I hate to overcome it, right? I can do twice a week, right? And leave, let's be honest, not every Tuesday, every Thursday, it's not even easy. It's not always fun. When you prepare it, it's, you feel like, I don't know if I have the time. But guess what? We do it anyway. I don't listen to if what I feel like doing. I know this is an investment for eternity. And I want to see the reward in my kids one day. If I will live or not, I don't know. But I believe it, right? Do something. You don't have to do that. Do something in your family. If you want to do that, copy it. It's my, not my copyright on it. Number two, last thing. Invest in your church family. Take a stand. Make a difference. Don't just be a person coming here. Maybe you've been coming here for a while and you've been checking it out. That's fine. You're welcome to do that. But maybe you feel now, no, this is my church family. Come on, then you can take a step and invest to be a part of it. To stand united with your church family. Lead a life group right join the dream team make a difference find your purpose and make a difference here as a church family stand united under one vision together to see a city change right I, I promise you we have applications ready every service for you out in the hub you can join anytime right we want to guide you want to help you find your purpose and help you get plugged in where you fit where the gifts of God in you will fit the greater picture of this church we can make it when we stand united like that guess what would happen we will see a city changed for Jesus and we re-church will leave a legacy in our time that would be noted in history book revival in our time in Austin Texas do you believe that come on can we give God a big hand for his word today and I want to ask you now if everyone can close your eyes and just be quiet for a minute here because I want the word that you heard today store up your treasure in heaven take the word now let it sink down to your heart what does it mean for you maybe you're struggling right now maybe people are gossiping about you maybe you're paying a high price personal with persecution and misunderstandings and maybe your family is even against you come on I want to encourage you don't give up don't give up do what's right to do Look at Joseph's life. Look at the legacy he left. Look at the treasure he stood up in heaven. That's for you as well. And I know you're here and you, you don't have a relationship with God. You don't know God. Maybe you did know him, but, but you fell away from him. Maybe if you would die today, you don't know if you will get to heaven or not. Let me just encourage you. Because he's just one prayer away and Jesus, let me tell you the story of Jesus in, in one minute or less here. Jesus came to this earth 
to do one thing to leave a legacy Jesus he was persecuted he was falsely accused more than you and I will ever be but the Bible says that he did not defend himself himself with one word but he took the punishment because he had his eyes fixed on a treasure in heaven that he was longing for that he desired more than anything else so he let the nails go through his hands he let the the the, the whipping hit his back he was bleeding he was suffering he was in this terrible terrible pain and anxiety but he carried it because he had his eyes fixed on the treasure in heaven you know what the treasure that he saw was that was you that was me you are the treasure of God that he gave his life for and he died for to find in heaven one day I'm asking you today you only one prayer away from God I will come to three and when I get to three I want you to lift your hand and say yes Daniel that's me and I want to pray with you right where you're sitting right now so one make your hand ready two don't leave this place without this decision today three lift your hand now yes lift it up lift it up keep it up thank you thank you thank you thank you take that hand and place it on your heart right now and I want to lead you and the entire church in a prayer here let's pray this out loud and clear so your ears can hear what your mouth is saying let's say this Jesus thank you for loving me thank you for dying for me please forgive me my sins give me a fresh start give me a new beginning fill me with life fill me with purpose fill me with your Holy Spirit from today I want to live with you and I want to live for you in Jesus name amen come on can we put our hands together for all those precious people who made that decision come on